If you feel like you are failing the COVID awakening, I am gonna give you three tips in this video that will help you alleviate COVID guilt. Actually, I'm gonna give you five. <laughs> All right, I'm Allison Graham and my work is helping you find a better, less stressful way to just get it all done. Now, I gotta tell you, uh, there is a lot of comparison going on in the conversations I'm having with people and a lot of guilt that we're not achieving. And you know what, it's funny, there's a joke one going around that like, you know, we're on day 22 of the lockdown and so far I have managed to not have any sugar, no carbs, no, um, you know, dairy, and I have lost, you know, X amount of pounds, and you know, this is somebody else's status, but who is it, whoever it is, you know, anyway, it was this thing, but I was reading it and I didn't know it was a joke. And I'm like, I am failing. I am, I am failing the COVID awakening was my initial instinct. And then of course I realized it was a joke and uh, allowed that guilt to go. But the thing is, that was a joke, but there are a lot of people who are putting on brave faces and who are, um, you know, saying, oh, look at me, I'm doing this and I'm uh, really using this time to rearrange my house or, you know, sort out the basement or do this or do that or, you know, I'm homeschooling my kids and working a job and doing this. And you know what? It just, the comparison on a good day is never effective for confidence but also like it's it's worse now so i believe this is like the great magnifier and i'll uh, talk about that in another video so definitely check it out but whatever our habits or tendencies were before the lockdown and covid19 the truth is they are going to be magnified now so if you had someone who you look to and always felt less than or that you were comparing yourself to them and they made you feel insecure or, well, actually nobody can make you feel anyway, but uh, if you felt insecure when you would look at their stuff, like I'm not doing enough, that's just gonna be magnified now. And so I wanna uh, help you overcome that. And uh, it's not always that easy, but it definitely can be done. Because the truth is we're all on our own journey. And so how can you go through this in the best way for you? And that doesn't mean you have to write a book. That doesn't mean you have to launch an online program. That doesn't mean you have to turn your kids into road scholars uh, because, you know, they hadn't been one before. So why is the lockdown going to make it happen now? I don't know. All right. So first thing is you need to understand that no one, no one, let me repeat that, no one, knows what they're doing. Nobody has a clue. <laughs> Nobody has it all together. So two nights ago, I was on the phone with a friend of mine who was like, you know what, my business is totally suffering. I don't know what to do. My son is here. I'm trying to homeschool him and I'm so focused on him. It's like, I got to do recess and, um, you know, keep him healthy and worry about his mental health and help him through that and his math homework and I don't know math. And, you know, I'm just so focused on that. And I feel like my business, which I need to like figure out how to, you know, get it revenue positive again, is like I'm neglecting it. And so that was two nights ago. And then a friend of mine who has a really great job at a, a big company and she and I were, you know, on house party having a chit chat and she's like, Allison, she's just like, I'm totally failing as a mom. Like I have so much work to do. I have to work because I'm still getting paid. And I've got two kids, like, you know, I think one's eight, one six, who are, I'm putting in front of screens all day. And she's the like, people are like, oh, how are you doing it all? She goes, I'm not doing it all. Like my husband and I, we both got to work. And the kids are suffering and I don't know what to do about it because I can't like send them somewhere you know I can't I can't I don't have the school so it's like nobody has it all figured out the people who you know um have the big fancy houses and uh, have all the money in the world like maybe their kids they haven't spent time with their family because they've been you know for decades and now they're like everybody's infighting or you know there's just so many things you have to assume that no one is got it together all the time, every day. And like, you know, for me, I 
I'm cranking out a lot of content. I'm doing videos. I've got, I've actually already launched a new online program, um, helping you know people who want to launch online programs, walking them through exactly every single step, every single technology on how to actually create your online program. And I did that, and I launched it. And I know some people are like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you did that." Yeah, but here's the thing, I'm on my own. I don't have kids. I got a dog who's bored out of his mind. Um, and so I can do that, but I also derive a lot of, um, a lot of my coping is creative work. That's where I cope. So, you know, it looks different, but here's the thing. I was going to do this video, uh, six days ago and, uh, you know, I want to really launch my YouTube channel. So please, by the way, subscribe and I'll have lots more of these videos, but I literally spent six days procrastinating on it because I didn't know what background to choose. <laughs> And then this morning, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do the plain background. Just on me, on the couch. No big deal. <laughs> so, you know, like we all have our things. And like if that was something you would have procrastinated on or made uh, excuses for before, it's magnified now. But like we're all going through this. And we are all, you know, in some way not being our full self. What if the only way you validated your value and your identity was to go to a movie set? And if you're not the big, you know, superstar actress, then you're like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. Like, I mean, it's just, everybody's got their pain. So stop comparing yourself to other people, please. And hopefully that perspective will help. Next, and I already alluded to this a little bit, but think about what lights you up. All right, because for me, it's creative work. It's sharing content, it's writing, uh, like creating a pro, like to me, that doesn't feel like work. So if I can lose myself in that, that makes my days, A, I feel like I've created something, and B, I, it, it gives me an escape from thinking about what the, is going on in the big, big context of the world. Uh, what about you? Like, do you love, um, you know, doing projects. Like, there is zero chance that my basement is going to get sorted throughout this. <laughs> like it didn't get sorted before. It's not going to get sorted now. But other people, I'm hearing them and they're like, oh my gosh, well, we cleaned out the basement today and we cleaned out the garage and we, uh, you know, fixed this thing. And I'm like, yeah, not doing any of it. But if we compare ourselves, because that's what is really good for them. It's not necessarily what's really good for you. So figure out what lights you up and focus on that. Next thing is that one doable project goal. So it doesn't have to be all of these things. Maybe sit down, write a list and say, okay, if I were motivated to do something right now and I wanted to achieve something, what would be the things I'd kind of want to achieve? Now, you're not going to learn a new language and organize your basement and launch an online program and filled your YouTube channel and homeschool your children and exercise and get rid of carbs. Thing is, I think we expect ourselves to do all of these things. And then we have this COVID guilt. It's like, I'm home, I should be doing all this. Well, no, you know what? Maybe you don't need to do that. You don't have to create all of these new goals. Like your life right now, as you knew it, is kind of paused. So figure out what are you doing within that pause that will make you feel satisfied, but not guilty if you don't do, if you have too many things. But here's the flip side. You need to have some sort of a goal and not because you need to keep up with the Joneses, not because you need to, you know, shine it out on social media, but because our mental health requires us to be working towards something and feel hope towards something. And so if you're really struggling with depression or uh, anxiety or getting caught up in the news, I need you to choose one project, one thing that will light you up that you can get lost in each day, okay? Because we need something to work towards. So I'm not letting you off the hook and saying you don't need to do anything, uh, but you do need to figure out one thing that will make you feel good. And the fourth way that you can alleviate COVID guilt is to stop looking at what everybody else is doing. 
I remember long before this happened, a friend of mine uh, was putting everything up. She went on a family vacation. She's got three great kids and a husband and they, they went away and all these pictures just looked like, I was, and so when she got back, I was like, oh my God, that looked like the best family vacation. She started hell and she's like, oh my gosh, Allison, <laughs> it was awful. We just were really good at making it look good. Anyway, they ended up getting a divorce a few months after that. But like, if you're finding yourself comparing yourself to somebody, mute them. Stop scrolling. Like, I've muted a few people because I, I have this too, right? I'm like, you know what? I can't keep up with that right now. I, I just, I don't have it in me. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but just remove the trigger. The fifth thing I would say is this. And this is, this came out of a friend of mine who's like, I don't know what it is, but every time I see that person who is, you know, doing this and doing that and doing this and is like a homie, uh, you know, mo uh, whatever that phrase is, <laughs> it's like just really rocking the COVID lockdown. She's like, I feel exactly what we're talking about here. I feel guilty that I'm not doing enough. I feel judgmental towards myself. I feel insecure that, you know, I'm going to get to the end of this COVID uh, lockdown and I'm not going to feel like I actually achieved anything. And I'm like, okay, well, number one, let's mute her. If that particular person, for whatever reason, it'll just magnify, right? And they have a history and so that's fine. But the next step is let's figure out what it is about how they're positioning their reality to you that is triggering you to feel less than. Because often when we feel jealousy or insignificance compared to somebody else, it's because they're doing something that we know we could do, or we wish we were doing, or that they're highlight because people often act as a mirror for us right and so what is what what are they holding up for you it's a good question to ask and then that just helps the self-exploration right what's the self-awareness that can come from that no judgment just curiosity and then you know they're doing all these things well then ask yourself yeah, but do you really want to do those things? Like, d is that really how you want to spend your time? Maybe how you want to spend your time is discovering the end of Netflix. Like, and that's okay. And some days you may want to do that. And that's the other thing. So I'm going to add another tip is recognize the ebbs and flows and the roller coaster ride of what we're all going through. Because not every day is going to be a power day. And some days you just got to be like, you know what? Today's the day I'm just going to take it off. Today is the day I'm going to sit here in my comfies and I'm going to get a blanket and I'm going to put everybody in the family in front of the movies, in front of the TV. And I'm just going to go for it. And then other days you're like, you know what? Screw this. I am going to build this today. I'm going to fix this today and then do that. But there's no right answer. So if you're feeling COVID guilt, bring it to your awareness, understand what's driving it, and then shift your expectations of the answers of the two. That'll help you get over there. Because here's the thing, if you're just existing and the whole time, so let's say, you know, we're, we're in this situation for another month. If you get to the end of the month and you look back and you go, oh my God, I've wasted the whole time feeling guilty that I wasn't doing enough, instead of just being like, maybe doing nothing is me doing enough. That's really hard to see or to, to embrace, I think. But it's quite freeing when you do. And I would also say that, you know, there's gonna come a time when you are busy again. A month before this happened, I mean, I was brought into companies to talk to them about how to deal with their stress levels because everybody was too busy to actually get their work done effectively. Now you don't have all that option. This is like when you get to redesign your life. Even if all the money's gone, even if 
all your business is gone. Even if you've lost your job, this is your opportunity to redesign your life. And so working and taking small incremental steps towards that, I think is the way that you can uh, feel really good about yourself. And you can only feel good about yourself from your own internal journey. We can't judge it against somebody else's journey. So I hope that helps you find a better, less stressful way. Again, I am Allison Graham. This is my new YouTube channel uh, that I'm really focusing on. So please subscribe, share it with somebody who you think might hear this message and comment below as well to give me some encouraging words as we go through this journey. So uh, thanks so much for being here and uh, I wish you well.